Welcome <laughs> to Magna Vidivo Church. Now that's an interesting statement because there's a Magna, or there are churches that are here in Magna, like the Catholic Church, which is a Our Lady of something, I can't remember exactly its title, and there's a Samoan or another church down the way that's one thing, and then there's another one that's Ebenezer, which is a kind of a messianic, maybe kind of Christian, I don't know, something, but they're doing a lot of Jewish stuff mixed in with it. So there's a wide variety, and I'm sure there's probably a Baptist church around somewhere. Usually there is, you know, in some communities, but maybe not here, I don't know, you know. But I've been in Magna for about five years, you know. Been in Utah, well, I don't know. I think my wife said 15 years, approximate. I'm not sure on that one. You'll have to ask her if you see her. But being that this is the first Vidivo, the first Magna Vidivo of Magna Vidivo Church on Sunday, this being March 5th, and it's probably, for me, 10 o'clock, you know, more or less. But I'm recording this because... One of the things about Magna Vidivo and Magna Vidivo Church is that you're not actually going to come to a physical place unless, you know, we decide that, you know, I record outside and you can watch it being recorded. And I, you know, maybe, who knows, maybe have a dialogue. I don't know. I doubt it, but maybe. But you're used to going to church in a pew, possibly, which is those kind of long benches. You know, pew is just a spiritual term for a bench. And it's uncomfortable, you know. I mean, I don't know if you've been uncomfortable in benches or pews, but I have. I don't like pews. When I used to go to church, I mean, they kind of, they had some pews, you know. And I used to go barefoot to church at times, and I got away with it for a little while. But most churches have like a pew, um, you know, some maybe some stained glass windows, who knows. You got kind of a stage up front, you know, and you're sitting like back a ways, you know, probably, maybe even far back. You know, there's a lot of people kind of crowding in on left sides and right sides. There might be a main, you know, walkway in the middle, you know, and kind of like, you know, the stage has a bunch of junk up there for maybe music or, you know, entertainment or maybe even one of those screens, you know, you can see things up on top. But that's come a long way from where originally, quote-unquote, I come from, or where the church comes from, and what God is doing. You see, in the beginning, when God created heaven and earth, He actually just talked to people. You know, He just said, Hey, I'm talking to you. And people went, Oh, okay. And they looked up. They saw God. Or they saw at least something they could put their eyes upon, but they heard the voice of God. And the voice of God spoke to them and said, Hey, you know, walk with me. And, you know, Adam walked with God, you know, in the garden. And it was kind of a neat thing, you know. He didn't have any clothes on. That was kind of cool, you know, one of the first nudies. You know, or first, you know, like skinny dippers. He might not have been skinny, though. Who knows? He didn't have a belly button, though. Think about that. But in the beginning, that's kind of what, you know... God was all about. He was kind of talking to people and people were talking to God and they were like intercoursing, meaning that they were talking back and forth. I know you think the word intercourse means sex. Sorry, we'll talk about that someday. But the point is, is we have these preconceived ideas. We have this mindset that says church is, you know, a steeple with all the people, you know, like here is the church, and here's the people, see all the doors, see all the people, you know, kind of, you might have heard that. Or you might have been a Mormon, you know, and you go, well, there's a temple, and then there's a meeting hall, or whatever they call it, you know, and then there's like, down the street, they got those, and then they got the big temple thingy, you know, and they take a lot of money, you know, like 20%, 23%, I don't know, I'm not a Mormon. Catholics, you know, they got the big statues, you know, and they got Mary, you know, and they got, you know, St. Peter, and they got all the other saints, you know, and they got popes, you know, and they got bishops, you know, I mean, uh, Mormons have bishops, so that kind of goes along. Greek Orthodox, you know, they're similar to the Catholics, you know, you have a, a lot of what are called Christian religion that has a lot of churches associated with it. The Mormon church isn't uh, normally considered a Christian church, it's considered a cult, but... 
hey, you know, what can I say? It's just the way it is. But now they've been pushing for so long and they got so much money that they probably have bought their way into being called Christian. Eh, you know. But you probably know more about Mormons than I do. And I might know more about Mormons than I'm saying. So we're not going to go there about Mormons. What we are going to go about is what does and what is Magna Vidivo Church? This is this video. You see, I've been doing videos for a while now, quite a while. Because there's about, oh, I don't know, five or six or 10,000 videos out there that are video that I've been recording with my personal and intimate relationship with Jesus about what I am learning from and making known to other people about my relationship with Jesus and how they can have a relationship with Jesus. And they can study the Bible on their own and they don't have to go to church, but they can go to church and they can do really almost whatever they want to do as long as they talk to God first and work it out with His Spirit, not my spirit or your spirit or some spirit or the spirits that are out there. No, you know, you kind of got to talk to God about it because it is, after all, his property if you've given your life over as a Christian to God. If you haven't given your life over and you don't believe in God, well, okay, you know, I mean, maybe you could figure that one out for me. I'm not sure how you can figure that one out for me because I talk to God like in the beginning and God talks to me like in the beginning. And I don't know how to deny that because I can hear God speak. Oh well. You could too, I think, but you know, that's what Jesus said, but you're going to have to deal with Jesus on that one. So, that's probably what you're going to hear a lot of and what we believe in in Magna Vidivo Church. We believe in God. We believe what God says and we believe what God does and we let Jesus tell us and explain it to us so we understand it better. And by His Spirit, we allow for our understanding, our preconceived ideas to maybe get changed a little bit so we comprehend what is, what was, and what shall be about God revealing himself to us. Because God said he has. He said he did, and he said he will, through Jesus. Well, I took him at his word, so I kind of got a handle on it better than maybe you do, and that's why I'm the, some people call preacher. I guess that's as good a word as anything else, because you've heard the word and you've seen like the, the priests out there. You know, they do these priestly things, you know, wear robes. You've seen ministers where they minister whatever they're ministering to, you know, like minister of music or minister of money, you know, or the minister of the food, you know, and clothing, and they pass it out, you know, so you got that part, ministering. Pastor is a little more confusing because the word pastor really means to, to shepherd a flock, you know, and you're supposed to be, like, taking care of the sheep, you know, and going out and meeting with them, you know, and talking to them and visiting with them. More priests do that more than possibly pastors do. Pastors might stand at the end of the row of the aisle that you were talking about when you think about churches and greet you and say hi, you know, and say, oh, you know, we got to get together sometime. But really, they don't know you that well unless you go out of your way to make yourself known to them because they're not really working that hard to find out who you are and what you are unless it's a tiny church, a small fellowship, a small congregation of people. Five or ten. <laughs> You get past 50 and, well, it gets a little carried away and suddenly, you know, you're not talking to the same people anymore. They're busy. What can I say? But Magna Vidivo Church really doesn't care about how many or how few. Because you'll be learning, doing, listening to, watching, or participating in some way without ever having to go out of your way to be known or to know me in any way, because I'm going to just simply share with you or talk on the video all about the Bible and all about, you know, magna and things going on in the community and in the world at large and things that affect you because you live here in magna, because you're a part of the area of the township that people call magna, but more importantly, you are a human being with feelings and emotions and 
privileges and problems and perspectives and ideas and intelligence and stupidities that all of us as human beings have. I do. I'm just as stupid as you are. <laughs> How do you like that? Yeah, you're not supposed to say that. You're a Christian. Well, yeah, I call myself a follower of Jesus, but you know, when you, if you want to say Christ-like, you know, which is what Christian means, I'm not that Christ-like. I don't walk around in a robe. You know, I don't have glowing, you know, stuff on my face to make me glow or whatever. You know, I mean, I'm just like everyday people, you know. I mean, could be called better a grumpy old man, which is going to be this afternoon's service is going to, or this afternoon's video, it's not really a service, but this afternoon's video is going to be called Grumpy Old Man. And I'll introduce myself and who I am and what I am. But in this video, the first one, the Sunday morning video, is about Magna Video Church. You can't participate in it monetarily. So let's clarify. There are certain... They're not doctrines. They're not dogmas. They're not rules. They're just certain facts. One, no money, honey. Keep it. Use it. Spend it. Whatever you want to do with it, your money, you keep it. But you're not going to watch this video and I'm going to get some secret little, you know extra point zero zero two cent you know for every time you view it no these are not monetized videos these are not even though they may exist on YouTube or Facebook there is no back door or front door or any door way of me or my participation in Magna Video Church to receive any funds whatsoever. Nothing. Nada. If, it, if any money ever gets handed into my hand, I give it right back to you because I've had that happen. People have tried to give me checks, money orders, deposits, crypto, <laughs> send it by way of Venmo or yeah, Venmo and, and any other way. And no. Ain't gonna happen. Don't want it, don't need it, ain't gonna be a part of it. Because, frankly, that's not what Magna Vidivo Church is about. We don't need your money. Rather, rather you kept your money and do with it what you want to. Because there's been a lot of this talk about where God abides, God provides, you know, and that's kind of an old Jesus freak thing and an old Calvary Chapel statement. But it wasn't true. Because, in a way, they still contradicted what they had to say because they still took money in. I mean, come on, let's be real. They still passed the plate in some ways at different times at different parts of the ministry. There are times there were a box out front, you know, where they went with that for a while, but then kind of slipped away, you know, as gradually the Jesus freaks became yuppies, you know, and they kind of like incorporated, like most churches do, the plate. Pass the plate so we could pass out the money. Only, who gets part of that money, you know, I mean... I know why they do it. I could tell you all about tithing and everything else, but there's a common expression here in Utah that I've never heard of before and I, before I got here. Now that I've lived here for a while, I know why they say it. I know what they mean by saying it, and it's not a pleasant term to use. It's derogatory. It's, it's kind of like knocking the Mormon church, but it's called LDS Incorporated. And people in business use that kind of like hush hush you know it's like because if you have to be in business with Mormons you don't want to slam the Mormons because they got all the money they got all the power they got all the opportunities in Utah to do a lot of things that you kinda gotta you know scratch the back of the plant of the man that's feeding you or you gotta you know if you're a dog you know you gotta wag the tail you know you gotta bread the butter or butter the bread you know I mean there's a lot of street lingo we could use you know to describe but the bottom line is when you've got a church that has that much money, they have that much power. And if you're into political power, then you're probably a Mormon in Utah or a Republican and a Mormon in Utah. But either way, it doesn't matter whether you're a Republican or a Democrat, that's not, or Mormon, 
That's not what Magna Video Church is about. You could be a Mormon and still be a part of Magna Video Church. All you got to do is watch videos. You could be a Catholic and still be a part of Magna Video Church. Just watch the videos. You could be a Protestant, a Buddhist, a Muslim, a Jew, a Gentile, a whatever. You know, you could even put these on and watch, have your dog watch them. Wagging his tail. You know, I mean, hey, that's Magna Video Church because we're not really worried about our carpet or our pews or our building because we don't have them. <laughs> Do you begin to get the gist here? It's about the things that you are going to see, the things you are going to hear, the things you're going to do on your own with your own hands. Not me. I already got stuff to do. I'm right here doing them. I'm going to talk to you about what I've seen, what I've heard, and what I've handled with my own hands. And that's a scripture that's in the Bible. And you already want to know what chapter and verse, and I'm not going to tell you, because you can go look it up. You got a phone, you got an iPhone, or you got a, a droid, you know, of some type, or some kind of phone. And you're probably better at it than I am. I don't know. I mean, I could come over here, you know, and say, well, let me see. You know, do like everybody else does. Ignore you, and just play on my phone. I don't think so. So, Magna Vidivo Church celebrates the fact that you like your phone, that you use your phone, that you enjoy and employ technology in your phone. So, let me tell you, go to and find Magna Video Church on YouTube and you can watch the church. You can be a part of the church. You could be a member, so to speak. We don't have memberships, but you could be a participant in the church in that way by looking at, seeing, and hearing what's being said at Magna Vidivo Church. So, that's the first part of explaining what we believe in, who we are, and what we're doing. We're doing videos. They're called Vidivos. V-I-D-D-E-V-O. So, Magna Vidivo Church would be, of course, M-A-G-N-A -A with a space, and then Vidivo, which would be V-I-D and then capital D-E-V-O with a space and then church, which is C-H-U-R-C-H, church. Because, you know, you could say fellowship or, you know, something else, but, you know, church is okay for me. You know, it's like, well, it just means, you know, getting together, you know, kind of like having a, a potluck or having people come over for, you know, a birthday party or, you know, a celebration of some type, you know, or going down to, you know, a burger joint and having four of you eat, you know, and stuff. Because sometimes, Magna Video Church, you'll see me eating, and I'll say, hey, why don't you go grab a burger? I got one here, you know, let's talk. You know, I'll chew away and talk to you, you know, and we'll talk and rap. Now, we're not going to do live interactive chat rooms or live interactive video conferencing or Simon Says or whatever the latest, <laughs> whatever the latest video apps are. We're not doing that, you know. You, you know, you may want to send me a lot of information, you know, and a lot of, you know, prayer or something, because until God tells me to, I ain't doing it, because I've already seen how that goes, you know. I'm Jewish. I could argue all day long, and I'd wear you out with how long I could talk. But here in Magna, we know everybody talks, and that's the other part. I'm preaching because preaching is what the pastors don't do, or they say they don't. They say they teach. Well, I'm not going to lie to you. Anybody in any church, anywhere, at any time that makes you sit down and listen to them talk without you talking is preaching. They are not teaching. Let me clarify that. Anybody, anywhere, anytime, even a lecture at a college in a university, that's still preaching. That is not teaching. Teaching is interactive. It gives you an opportunity to ask questions, to make observations, to participate in understanding from your perspective and from your way of hearing it, what's being presented by the presenter in the information that's being related to you in a way that they are doing, which is called, dare I say, preaching. So, let's be real. I'm preaching. It's one-sided. You know, I mean, I don't hear you. Go ahead, say something. Say it again. Ah, I'm not just old, I can't hear you. So, I'm preaching. That's the second part of Magna Video Church. I'm a preacher. I preach. I don't teach. If you want teaching, 
you know, you can go to the school down the street, one way or the other, you know, somewhere over there, you know, the big C on the mountaintop, you know, whatever, the new one or the old one or the new one to come or whatever, and go talk to a teacher because they have a school plan. They have, you know, a bunch of different things that you have to participate in, fill out, you know, and do and write and think and say and take tests and all that. I'm not a teacher. I don't want to be a teacher. I wind up teaching in a lot of ways to a lot of people, but that's not because I'm a teacher. It's just because they're learning on their own means and ways and opportunities according to what God is doing in their life. You know, and if it happens to run across me, well, you know, we'll talk. I'm not going to teach you, but I'm going to preach, you know, so. So what I do is that I preach. Now, there's a thing called a witness, you know, and you, you know, I don't want to hear about Jehovah's Witnesses. I don't want to hear about the two witnesses. I don't want to hear about all these other witnesses, you know, because what I'm talking about is simply there's a witness that gets up in court and takes the stand. Do you promise to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth to help you God? Or I promise or I swear or I whatever. But when you go to court, you know, if you've done something wrong and somebody saw it, that person that gets over there with the prosecution or whatever is called a witness. He talks about what he's seen, what he heard, and what he's telling the jury or the judge about what you did, if that's what the case is about. He's a witness, meaning that he can only talk about what he saw, what he heard, or what was directly involving him, not everyone talking about it. And then he's talking about it because then they call that secondhand information or, you know, speculation. And it's just not included in a court of law because of the laws of court. So a witness was meant to be someone that could say they saw it, they heard it, and they handled it with their own hands. And usually two or three witnesses in the Bible are what establish something as being accurate. Because two might mess it up, but three, yeah, you're getting pretty close, you know, pretty good idea. So, I'm a witness of what I saw in the Jesus movement. I'm a witness of what I see God doing in my life and people around my circle of friends and in my circle of friends and circle of people that I know. So, I witness to those things. I don't witness like taking tracks and going out and, you know, going to, you know, trick you into, you know, getting saved. Okay, maybe I do that too. <laughs> Here, take my track. I'm not going to come over your house. I'm not going to visit you. I'm sorry. I'm not interested. You know, I mean, if you happen to be, you know, in my house, I might give you a book. You know, ah, you could have this book. Here, I got an extra one. You know, whatever. I mean, just like any other tech manual or trade manual or magazine, you know, I'm not going to sign you up for a prescription. But, you know, I'd probably give you something, you know, if you were wanting it, you know, and needed it, you know, pass it on. But... You know, witness is just kind of been messed up by the church. So, you know, don't think that we're going to witness to you. You know, that's not what's going on. I'm talking to you straight up, you know, and that's what Magna Video Church is about. We're straight up with what we're saying, what we believe in, and what we're doing. So, that's the third part. Now, the fourth part is, yes, it's about Jesus, okay? So, you're going to hear some religious things that have been stated religiously, and then I'll restate them in... Maybe Magna Talk, or maybe in a way that's humorous, or stupid, or Jewish, or Christianized, or, uh, you know, se habla español, you know, poquitismo, bueno, bueno, you know, maybe in a different language, you know, I don't know, maybe I'll speak in tongues. No, I'm not going to speak in tongues. <laughs> but anyway, the point is, there's the tongue, I'm speaking tongue. But the point is, There is so much misapplication that people, as soon as they go into a church, never get a chance to hear what the message is or what the people are doing because there's so kind of this anticipation that makes you messed up that Magna Video Church wants you to figure it out on your own. So you can watch in order, out of order, this one or the next one or any videos at any point in time just by reading what's being said and then learning from it in some ways. You can fast forward me, you know, you can reverse and back to the beginning, you know, and start all over again. But, you know, that's the benefit of 
Magna Medieval Church. It's a good thing. It's not a bad thing. It's a good thing. Now, it is about, like I said, religious things that are being said, you know, and so I'll talk about the Bible a lot because I know the Bible. You know, I mean, I frankly read it a lot. You know, I read it day and night. Well, okay, I don't read it day and night anymore. I used to read it day and night. I used to go to church seven days a week, you know, and go two or three times during the day on some days, like Sunday and a couple other days of the week. I used to go, you know, more than one day a week. And then after a while, I quit going to churches because, frankly, you know, I'd go to a church and I'd wind up helping them to get their church going, you know, and that's what I did. I was always working at the church more than being, you know, in the church. So, couldn't help it. So, I quit going to church because I got other work to do. And that's what this is, you know, Magna Vidivo Church. We're doing work, so to speak. Working for God. Which is kind of nice, you know, I kind of enjoy it because he's got better hours, you know, and got a better retirement plan. <laughs> you know what I mean. And it's a, solo, it's a whole lot easier doing it the way Jesus said, my yoke is easy, my burden is light, than doing it what Christianity says, go get, you know, a certificate and be called a minister or pastor or preacher, whatever. You know, I even went out and got one of those certificates as a preacher because somebody said they needed one and I needed to have one, so I went and got one, you know, so yes, I'm bona fide. And then now I don't care because if you ask me where it is, I'd say, I don't know, somewhere packed. Because I don't use it. Who needs it? Why? Who cares? So, being that it's Magna, and Magna Video Church, I have no doubt that you know a lot about whatever it is that you've gone through, but you might not know everything that you think you know unless you have an opportunity to divulge that in some way to tell me that you know it. So, I presume that when I present things that I have to give more information that maybe some of the things you've already heard or you already know because I don't know that you have it down or maybe you like I said gone into a church and had a preconceived idea what it is and this is just as much a church as anything else it's called a online church it's called a digital church churches today like to say they're live when they're canned because frankly they're only live for the short period of time that they're live, but then right after they're done being live, they're canned, but they're still considered live, so where do you go with that? You know, I mean, how live is live unless it's dead? So how real is what they're saying is live unless it's canned, and then if it's canned, it might be delayed, or how do you know? Who knows? Who cares? Unless you're there in person. Which you could be there in person watching me while you're in church someplace else. Wow, wouldn't that be cool? Two churches in one swoop. <laughs> Two phones, you could be in three churches. But this is a digital church. This is a virtual church, if you want to call it that. This is a online church. This is a techie church. So that's the way it works. Magna Vidivo Church is a church. No, let's be clear about something else. We talked about money. Let's talk about taxes. Hoy vey. Taxes, taxes, taxes. Isn't it disgusting? I mean, the sales tax, the food tax, and all the other taxes that here in Utah we got. Well, I don't get a tax break. <laughs> I, hello? I get so much provided by God, and you won't understand that till we get down the road together, you know. You can listen and watch and see. You'll believe it. But right now you don't believe it, I know. But I don't write off, you know, like donations or time spent in the ministry or calling myself a preacher or being a minister of the... I'm not even a minister. I'm a preacher of... I'm a preacher of Magna Vidivo Church or Vidivos. Don't get any way of money back from that either. I don't take a tax break. I don't take a tax cut. I don't, you know, write off my my um, expenses for recording. I don't get, you know, like to put down time spent recording or or the material that's used or anything. So... Let's just clear the air so we can sh shovel all that out of the way and flush it down the toilet because ain't nothing going to be a tie or some kind of stupid you know, accusation that you might make in some way if you get pissed off at me. And you will get pissed off at me that somehow I'm you know, like into the money. I don't get money. I don't have money. I'm poor like you. Well, you might not be poor. You probably got more money than I do. You might know how to run the system and I don't use the system. I don't even want to be a part of the system. I kind of like what I got. And he's up there. <laughs> so he works with me in a lot of ways that I get blessings out of it in other ways. If I 
give out all that I've been given in and he gives me other stuff you know like okay maybe I'll find a deal on clothes you know I go to the used stores and I buy used clothes or I'll find a deal at the grocery store it's on sale or it's marked down or it's expired I'll buy it you know because I'm cheap and I want to save money so yeah hey I'm not about money I'm about saving money but I'm not about you know like collecting money or trying to be rich or famous and that's the other part I guess we should mention too How do you tell someone when you're recording a video that you're not about fame? You know, I don't have an ego like that, you know. My ego may be true about some other things, you know. I'm proud of the fact that, you know, God is in control or proud of Jesus and a lot of things. But I'm not, you know, I don't have an ego about me. You know, I'm a sinner. I sin still. You know, I'm working on it. I'm fixing it. You know, or God is fixing it. I'm a follower of Jesus. You know, it's a, a lifelong experience I'm going through because I live in this body that sucks you know it's all carved up and screwed up and messed up and sinful and and dirty and yuck and old did I say old old really old but it's also in great shape because I can do miraculous things it seems like you know to other people that the miraculous that I can you know I'm in fantastic physical shape for a guy that's totally disabled from Crohn's disease supposed to be and dead at 30 don't look dead to me. Wow, cool. So, having said that, no, it's not about fame either. So, it's not about me. It's not about all those things, which we'll talk about in, you know, like the cranky old man things. Then you'll realize, yes, I am a cranky old man. I'm proud of it. You know, in some ways, those parts I'm proud of. My flesh. <laughs> and, you know, crucify that sucker. But, for Magna Video Church, I have to be real. I have to be me. You know, I, I gotta be me. I gotta be me. Oh, what do you see? It only can be all I am, and that's got to be me. No, drop the mic. It's, um, frankly, just simply how I am with my wife. And, you know, if you're around me long enough, you know, which I don't want you around me long enough, because I don't want you around me, but if you're around me in a long period of time, you see, this is who I am. I just, no difference, you know. Sometimes when I talk about Jesus, I might, you know, grin more, I might laugh more, I might feel more peaceful and joy-filled, but, you know, other than that, you know, that's why I don't want people around me, because I want to talk about Jesus, they don't want to talk about Jesus, you know, so, you know, you're not going to want to be around me, because I'm going to be talking about Jesus, you know, but I might help you. Now, when I go over to my neighbors, now, I've helped all my neighbors in my vicinity. Almost all of them have had their water break, so I've, you know, worked for days helping them to dig up their water lines, replace their water lines, fix their water lines and put back their water lines, you know, by hand, you know, and hard work. And their friends have helped and then they quit showing up slowly, you know, and I'm the last man standing, you know, because that's the way I am. I just believe that God gave me some abilities and when I can go do it, you know, he gives me supernatural ability to do it. And so I go do it and help. I don't say, oh, God sent me here to help you. I don't talk about God. I just help the person, whoever it is, whatever it is, what they need, you know, and just be the second-hand man. And that's what... Magna Video Church really is about, it's kind of like serving you without you knowing you're being served. It's about helping you without you knowing you're being helped. It's about giving you some data and some information that you can put to use in some way or flush it in any way that you choose to because I won't know either way. And that's what's so wonderful about how God, when he has it his way, because then it's not important to me. I don't have a Bible to put notches on that says, this guy saved. You know, he, he sent me a, an email or he put comments on the video. Oh, I got saved. And then he writes back, oh, I didn't get saved. Fooled you. Ha ha. You know, it doesn't work that way for me. I don't pay attention to either one of those. You know, if I see a comment, I might comment. But it was only if I see the comment. If I don't see the comment, I didn't comment because I didn't see it. Such a deal. So, Magna Video Church is going to be on Sundays. You know, and so you could always come and see, you know, if there's one or two, there might be two, maybe. Usually a morning, you know, I'm trying to do a video of Magna Church or Magna Video Church um, in the morning. And that's what this one is. This is a Sunday morning video and it'll say Sunday morning on it, you know. And then the next one will probably be recorded in the afternoon rather than at night. But I'm going to try to be outside more than inside and recording with my my iPhone more than my, my um, 
Orbit Sphere camera, <laughs> which is what I'm using right now, in my kitchen, sitting down at the kitchen table, that um, I can enjoy what I have in my garden outside. And you might figure out where I'm at. You know, I'm over here in Magna. You know, my Magna edition. You know, just close to that Catholic church. You know, not far. You know, kind of the one with all the flowers and trees and bees and birds and grumpy old man. <laughs> oh, that guy! Ah, I hate him, so I'm going to quit watching now. Goodbye! <laughs> I, you know, I don't care. You know, people... People like I, you know, we'll talk about that when I talk about a grumpy old man, you know, about tonight's message from grumpy old man, you know, and uh, <laughs> I don't care. You know, it's going to be the big part of it. I don't care. <laughs> ah, you get it? I don't care. But in Magna Video Church, you know, you don't have to think of it as when the date, you see a date, you know, that it's going to be, oh, well, only for that date. That's not how God works. God can make anything that you're listening to apply to you whenever you hear it, whenever you see it, whenever, or whatever you need it at whatever point in time. So you could stop and start and go down the road, down the street, or be interrupted by cats and dogs, or bats, or elk, or skunks, or squirrels, or whatever else goes wandering through Magna at the time, and then come back to it and just pick it up where you left off. I mean, that's the beauty I think of what how wonderful Magna Video Church is, because you can watch and pause and see and apply and learn anytime you want to. You don't have to do it on Sunday. It's just going to be, like I said, recorded. If I miss a Sunday because I'm somewhere else, I'll still put Sunday down on that date, you know, although maybe the video might show it as a different date, but I don't know. It depends when it's posted, but the video itself is we're, we're seeking to do these things on Sunday morning and Sunday night. So it's twice a week that you get Magna Vidivo Church Sunday morning tape, a series of topical studies, and then a Sunday night tape, which to start with, we haven't started a series there yet because tonight will be about me because I wanted to explain who I am in regards to what I'm doing here with Vidivo Church. And... That's why it'll be that, but soon we'll be going through different Bible, either topics, a biblical topical study, or subject, Bible subject studies maybe, or maybe both, you know, and have three different videos. But sooner or later, you'll probably get into where we're going to go through the Bible and just kind of, you know, present it to you, you know, so you kind of get a handle on what you do know about the Bible and maybe what you never thought of before with the Bible. Because I can tell you that, you know, I, I, there, are, there are people I studied with that blew my mind, you know, totally, you know. And not everyone quotes them or not everyone, you know, gives credit for where they got their information from. But, hey, God inspires and God conspires within me speaking to choose to use what words he can in order to speak to you in a way that you understand. It almost sounds like I rhymed all that, but I didn't do it on purpose because that's how the Spirit of God works in a man or a woman or a child or a dog or a donkey. A donkey spoke. That was the Spirit of God speaking to the donkey. Balaam got warned. Hey, you know, why, why are you beating me, man? I'm trying to stop you from getting killed by that angel stand over there. That's what happened in the Scriptures. It wasn't a made-up story. It was a true, factual, detailed account of what happened to Balaam, a prophet of God, when he was dealing with Balak and when he was trying to curse the children of Israel. So, when you go around learning things of life, if you don't have God involved in it, then, you know, I don't care. You know, I mean, anybody can be, you know, a master of coasting or cruising through life on their own merit, their own skill set, their own way of doing it, their own shtick, their own biases or prejudices, their own stupidities, their own smarts. But Magna Video Church is going to be about possibly helping you to not just cruise, but to live life, you know, in a more intimate and particular way that involves Jesus in some way. I'm not saying you need to go out and be a raving lunatic, born-again Christian, you know, that's some kind of Jesus freakish 
you know, ex-Mormon, whatever, Catholic, something, Jewish, Christian, whatever. No, I'm just saying, when it comes to being more me, a full person, complete person who I am, without all the baggage attached, man, ain't nothing like walking with God to have him do that with you. Because uh, God made you. And frankly, I think that's pretty cool. He made me, and frankly, I'm impressed. Why? I don't know. You know, that's not really completely our venue. It says he did it because we're just created for his own reasons, his own pleasure. He enjoyed the fact that he made you. He enjoyed the fact that he made me. Where you go with that, you know, is going to mess you up or help you along the way. I can't help you on that one because then you got to deal with God, you know, and I can't deal with God for you. You can deal with God on your own. But I know when I started going, wait a minute now, that sounds pretty damn selfish. You made me for your own good pleasure. Then what the hell am I doing here? You know, why am I got my own feelings of independence and my own feelings of, you know, I'm... I'm master of my own destiny, God of my own world, you know, this, that, and the other thing, and I'm like this, and I'm growing, and I'm whatever. Well, did he talk to me, and I went, oh, oops, okay, I, I could buy that, which was more along the lines of, frankly, God said, well, that's fine, Michael, you know, I, I get what you're saying, you know, yeah, you're doing your own thing, how's that working out for you? Wonderful. Lord, I think I'm doing great. Really? Okay, cool. Now, when you die, let me know how that works out for you. Oh, okay. Well, now, maybe you got a point there. <laughs> maybe, you know, I might want to, you know, hedge my bets here. So, tell me about this death stuff. You know, so, me and God, we've had some long conversations. A lot of arguing. I've done a home. Oh, I've done a lot of arguing in parking lots by myself with no one around in the dark you know just the one light you know and being out there with God and yelling at God you know and not being locked up because nobody found me and saw me but they probably would have locked me up thinking I was crazy or they would have laughed because some of the arguments I argued about were pretty stupid in some ways in my opinion but they made sense that I was you know mad at God about so I got over it eventually you know and so I've been around for I've been a uh, met Jesus like in 74 so I've been around a long time so I kind of got a better handle on some of these things for me than maybe you do for you because maybe you didn't get through your own pissed off at the Mormons or pissed off at the Catholics or pissed off at the pastor or the people or the wife or the kids or the husband or the dogs barking next door Grumpy old man, I told you, that's what it's going to be about tonight. <laughs> Kill them dogs. <laughs> yeah, I did say that. That's not very Christian. You're right, because I didn't say I was a Christian. I mean, I am, but not by way of what most people consider what a Christian is, because they always have this preconceived idea of what they think a Christian is, rather than what God says a Christian is. So, we're going to wrap this up now. And I'm going to say, you know, we want to kind of keep some things in the Sunday morning services or the Sunday morning messages, the Sunday morning videos. One of them is Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 because that's how I live my life. It's a, it's a, Proverbs is a book in the Bible that was, when you say proverb, you could say P-R-O verb. Now, I don't know if you know conjunction, junction, that's your function, putting up together in words and truth. You know, I mean, you know, grammar rock isn't, a bad idea, a bad way to learn things. You know, I learned a lot of scriptures from singing Calvary Chapel, what they call Sunday school songs now, but back then it was just like, we were Jesus freaks, so we were just singing them as thinking they were adult songs. You know, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whosoever believed in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. You know, blah, blah, blah. Or now rapping, it would be, for God, 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 so love, 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 the world, 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 world. He gave his only guidance. <coughs> Ugh. 
wrap it, dude. You know, strap it to yourself and knock it down. <laughs> Kick it. Whatever. Bounce it. Or bounce down. But Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 as a proverb just simply meant things to be. Positive to be. Things to go forward with. To be a part of your life. Proverb. It's, in English, it makes perfect sense. It works. Where nobody else could say it, that's the way it works. But it works. You know, if you just don't know Greek and Hebrew and all the other garbage you don't need to know. So, proverb. You know, proverb. is something just to be. So, in Proverbs 3, 5 and 6, which is taking out of context, I'll admit, you know, but it's a good thing to memorize. It's one of what we call, from this other group called Navigators, one of the five scriptures that say, you say you can put your hang your hat on. You could spend the rest of your life learning and never finish doing, you know, or you could put start doing and never finish trying to do or be a part of your life and it will always cover everything in your life. Five scriptures. They're called assurances, like assurance of salvation, assurance of forgiveness, assurance of answered prayer, assurance of wisdom, and assurance of something. I forget what the fifth one is. So, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 simply says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not into your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him, and He shall direct your path. I think I want to end Magna Vidivo Church with that. That maybe you could say it with me, because we used to sing a song from Calvary Chapel, Costa Mesa, that was kind of a Jewish blessing. It was like, the Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face to shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee and be gracious unto thee. Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give me. You know, it sounds wonderful, but it was about the only time that the crowds got a chance to say something back to the preacher or the teacher or whatever he called himself, pastor. And the pastor got a chance to say something to the other people and they prayed it, you know, or they sang it instead of prayed it. So, that's called an ironic blessing too, by the way. It comes from the Old Testament. It's the Levitical blessing. Um, but rather than that, I think that, you know, reminding ourselves, kind of like, you know, when you go to an AA meeting, or an NA meeting, or a non-violence meeting, or any of the things based upon AA, which, you know, has the Bible in it, you know, higher power, lower power, <laughs> any power, powers, JD powers, but... They say things and do things that are based upon these ideas from the Bible or principles or plans or programs. So, I just say it, you know, you don't have to repeat it, but that's what we're going to do at the end of each one. And then it'll, you know, I'll probably hit the button, you know, like right now you might see me move even to go put the button, turn the button off. But I'm moving the mouse over to turn the button off. Haha. <laughs> so, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not into your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he shall direct your path.